the hot and sexy breast up the city bird as you wait oh we have ourselves our first thriller of the season perhaps one that'll go down as an IPL classic as the night riders and the sunrisers have taken us to the very end game that ebbed and flowed and dramatically swung with sixes galore at the eden gardens with russell and classen cancelling each other out but harshit rana stands tall for kkr all that happened before him didn't matter he had to eventually defend 13 of the last which got even worse when he conceded six of the first ball of the final over and classen looked like he was going to take the sunrisers home but uh, finally uh, the last two balls just switched the game to the night riders and they pick up their first points a game that was thrilling on so many levels and we'll decide what uh, made the difference between the team that won and lost here on Maruti Suzuki Arena presents is spent again for time out we invite your questions and comments as the show goes on so get ready for them as i first take the raw emotions out of Wasim Jafar Mitchell McLanagan and Tom Moody all of whom said that the night riders should win it but i don't know if they expected <laughs> this kind of win uh, give me your first emotions Mitch McLanagan Yeah it was a it was a game of some really really good stuff mm. from both sides players in particular Andre Russell and Hunter Klaas and then and then some poor stuff as well I, I think towards the end KKR in terms of their death bowling um their plans were were a bit off and the kind of cost looked like it was about to cost them in the end but got across the line and it was nice to see Mitchell Stark show some experience and run across and and say this is the perfect ball to bowl, bowl to Pat Cummings mm. I mean the story is of the last over and of a young uncapped indian bowler bowling that under serious pressure after what had happened just before that starks over expensive russells over expensive even varun chakravarty expensive break down the story of the last few overs because that's when the game just exploded in it tom yeah it did you know hundred class and uh, you know played a role similar to andre russell really in the in the back end of of kkr's innings which gave them that um you know score over 200 which wasn't expected sort of at that 15 over mark so a very similar pattern in in both innings um both incredibly good power hitters glasson and 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 russell and just showed how dangerous they can be so no game is finished until mm-hmm. they're out um to me the last few overs there's a few lessons for kkr to take away uh with regards to bowler deployment you know it's so important the the order you have your bowlers bowling to make it as hard as possible for your opponent to get close to that finishing line uh you may set yourself that target to oh Mitchell Stark's got to bowl the 19th or the 20th at the beginning of the game but as the game unfolds those situations do change and there was an opportunity i felt that uh, uh, that i should have got stark yeah. in a lot earlier even though he had pre-planned for him to bowl the 19th or 20th to kill the game at that point because classen was always going to be a threat and you've got to put your most potent uh, bowler in that situation to make the margin even greater mm. i think we go to the decision to give varun chakravarty the ball in the 18th over and they mm. ended up on the right side of the result but i guess that's where if you're analyzing shreya sayer the captain is you know we got away with the win here yeah it could have gotten away right was him that's the bowler deployment tom yeah, speaks yeah, of in the last yeah i completely agree i mean he had an off day uh, where is uh, another guy sunil narayan gave 19 runs without considering even a boundary so he had a very off day and then if you've got somebody like classen batting like that you know makes a job really hard <laughs> but yeah i mean they need to sort out uh, shreyas here pretty new to the job even though he did it at dc but still new at the job i would say yeah. well it swung the momentum massively didn't it it really did that was the over went for 21 the situation as tom alluded to quite rightly that uh mitchell stark should have bowled that he bowled a beautiful over the mm. the previous over from that end he went mm. for five runs and and got kkr into a winning position and that momentum just carried on into the next overs after after that and stark obviously got taken down yeah when you mentioned stark got taken down if i have to think from shreya sir side it's like okay even if chakravarty goes for about 20 21 i have stark after that right it's highly unlikely that he will yeah. go for 26 in that over as it turned out mm. so he's thinking okay i can afford a bad over here if your mitchell stark mm-hmm. and that over before you's just gone for 20 21 class and suddenly looking different it plays on to how you bowl that that following over doesn't it well there's more pressure on it isn't there um Look, uh, Stark, clearly he missed 
in terms of what he was trying to bowl to Klaassen. And I think that'll be good learnings for him for the rest of the tournament in terms of the next time they come up against him because he'll be in that situation again. He's one of the best finishers in the game and, and he puts pressure back on the bowlers all the time. So they'll learn from that. They need to take it away from it a lot more and, and then use their slow ball bouncer nice and wide to him. But uh, it wasn't a, just a great finish. It was class batting from Hyra Klaassen and I know you're very happy about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Wasim Jafar had picked Hyra Klaassen in his... Uh, in his top three impact uh, players. So we'll see how those scores stack up just in a little while. But we've also seen an exhibition of T20 ball striking today from arguably Top Moody, one of the all-time greats in T20 cricket and, shall we say, one of the most destructive current generation batters. And what sort of observations do you make from the two innings that we saw in terms of what ball striking has come to? Yeah, well, both of them, it's pretty much their blueprint. You know, Andre Russell is um, just brutal with his ball striking. There's not a lot of finesse with it, mm. but there's just brutal strength. And his game has evolved over time. You know, he's had to learn how to deal with the short ball because there's a, a phase in his game where the opposition would go upstairs and he was a little bit sort of uncertain there. Now he can play that okay and he can get the odd ball out of the middle of the bat and hit it over mid-wicket for six or top edge it for six. And also that wide option, which is something that uh, a lot of teams have gone to with Russell and Pollard and those type of power hitters, try to go wide and slow and he played a magnificent shot over extra cover, just showing his growth and development over, over the years, re you know, recognising that he's had to evolve his game, it's not just you know, clearing that front leg and swiping it over mid-on and mid-wicket for six every ball. So it shows what he's about. Klaassen's more of a pure batter. You're going to get a lot more conventional stroke play. And he is very difficult to bowl to because, you know, he has got the complete game. He can play the short ball. He plays spin exceptionally well. You know, I'd hate to be a spinner to bowl to, to yeah. uh, Klaassen because he can hit you off the back foot yeah. for six comfortably. And therefore, if you just slightly get an inch fuller than you need to, he's hitting it off the front foot for six. So, you know, he's got all the options, all the options covered. So, you know, he is one of the best finishers in the game. And I think Nicholas Poran, you can put in that category as well as one of the best ball strikers that the game is currently seeing. It's amazing how he hits those back foot sixes straight. Mm. Yeah, and he does <laughs> he it with great... Ba it, but, he, you know, Wazim would appreciate this as a a former, you know, great batter and also batting coach is that, you know, facing spin, if you can use the depth of your crease, yeah. if you can be down the wicket and, you know, down the wicket by a metre or two metres, but also have the ability just as quick to get deep in your crease and power the ball down the ground, you, you're very difficult to bowl mm -hmm. to because your margin of error for a spinner, you know, goes from here to shrinks to here mm -hmm. and they know about it. I mean, margin error, error for Ms. Mitchell Stark also reduced in that over. So let's, let's just credit Harshit Rana for that one or two balls after being hit for six because you need something to go your way. If Heinrich Klassen isn't, if that's not going to take the middle or even the toe of Heinrich Klassen's bat and go for six and it, instead take the edge and get caught. So what can you appreciate about Rana with that particular wicket? Oh, I think clarity of his plan. Like start of the over, that puts you under a lot of pressure, but... For him, young, starting in his career, to, to be exposed to pressure at the start of the 20th <coughs> over and, and come back from that, that's going to be huge for him personally uh, because it's all about confidence. And, and T20 has a way of beating you down as a bowler. And, and if that had have in the first game of the IPL had have gone the opposite way and the first two balls went for six and he lost the game, then you know, it would be in a different situation. And, and then they're looking around for what other bowlers they have in their armoury to to bring in after a couple of games. There's also uh, some personality in play there. We saw him give Mayank Agarwal a bit of a send-off. Yeah. And maybe he's the kind of bowler, maybe you can relate to this, yeah. closer to home, who <laughs> relishes. Well, I hope he doesn't do this uh, little <laughs> kiss in the day games. Yeah. <laughs> when the kids are in bed, maybe you can show that off. But, uh, yeah. Yeah. but you could sense that this is a guy who's up for that sort of fight. Yeah. 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 Almost. And that, I guess, carries on from last season where... Clearly, Harshit Rana is trusted in this team as the primary Indian seamer. There's no Mesh Yadav, he's been let go of. Sakarya has been brought, but mm. doesn't get a game. So, Harshit Rana is perhaps KKR's number one Indian fast bowler. Yeah, I think he did well last season as well. Mm. I think in the emerging tournament, uh, 
He bowled really well there as well, yep. and he can bat a bit. Uh, he's not a mug with the bat, and to hold his composure uh, for that over, especially, and come back after getting hit for the six first ball, you know, shows a lot of it. Especially that catch as well. You know, Suresh Sharma is not known for his fielding ability to have that. You know, such an important catch. Mm. Uh, you know, both two guys actually stood out uh, in that crunch. Moment yeah. of the game. Little things that make the difference, and that's the difference in KKR ending up on the right side of the result. Questions pouring in. Uh, appreciation <coughs> for Klassen from Parinov Chaudhary. Devyank uh, with a point that we've already covered. But yeah, KKR won, but was it a goof up by to give Varun the 18th over? I think we've heard the panel's thoughts on that. Now, um, some criticism towards what came before Klassen in that Sunrisers chase. Uh, Ghostbusters saying, Samad could have done better in the 11 balls that he faced. And there's also criticism on Rahul Tripathi's innings. Now, you look at a game like that, one guy's gone 60 of 20, and then you have a couple of scores there that are in and about run a ball. The Tripathi innings did look like a bit of a struggle. It's only one game, but where do you sense Sunrisers would reflect on where this chase slipped away? I think also you've got to appreciate when Tripathi had to bat. You know, he, he had to face the best of Narayan. Mm-hmm. And Narayan was a class above anyone tonight with the ball, you know, ball, his four overs for 19, I think it was, mm-hmm. uh, with picking up just just the one wicket. But, you know, yes, Tripathi didn't find his rhythm, but, you know, he also faced some pretty tricky bowling, you know, and, and Narayan's, you know, it's not his first rodeo. He's, he's, <laughs> he's been under pressure plenty of times and he knows that ground well and he enjoys bowling at that venue. So, um, you know, it put a balance to it is that, you know, that phase... It was a tricky phase for him, uh, but yeah, he, he would have liked to have gone at a slightly better rate than he did. Yeah, I think it's it's a fair assessment would be if we look at Klassen versus Narayan as well. You're not going to see him getting more yeah. than a run of ball. Narayan's not gone for a boundary, as Wasim yeah. points out. So he's actually had a huge say, and you'd be very pleased with that because you might pop in with some points on your impact mm, numbers. I need them. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but the uh, I think for KKR, that's a huge box tick. They're two big West Indians who they showed so much faith in and who sometimes go missing on injury or whatnot, has started significantly well. Yeah, I, I think there's a few boxes that have been ticked mm. for KKR. You know, for them to be consistent this year, my view is that their, their attack needs to, you know, very much revolve around their spin dominance. You know, mm. they're, they're, they've got a good spin attack. And, you know, at their home venue, they need it to turn a little bit so they can stay in the contest. They need Russell firing in, in that sort of finishing role, which he started off very well. You know, I'm sure that mid- middle order is going to be, um, you know, a, a lot better off with the, with the run tonight, given that, you know, they haven't really fired, mm. but they've got quality there in, you know, Rinku Singh and Rana and Ayer. Yep. You know, that's, that's quality batting. So, you know, to, to, to walk away with a win tonight with many improvements to make, um, you know, th- th- they'll be quite pleased with it. Mm. Uh, Ayushi says, Harshad Rana seems to be a good all-rounder. If you're watching on our YouTube live, please send in your thoughts and I'll, I'm happy to put them across to the panel. Uh, some of our viewers going back to the first innings from, uh, from Sunrisers and the expensive finish themselves with Russell uh, taking them on. Maverick says, should Bhuvi be looking to bowl three in the power play and call it a day? He's not as good a death bowler. Snitch. Tom, uh, I, look, I, I think boovey has been historically one of the best bowlers, death bowlers in, in the IPL. I think he's, he's your perfect bookend bowler, I'd call them. You know, with, with the new ball, he swings it, you know, perfectly. I think he bowled two overs for six. Yeah. Uh, you know, yeah. he's done that consistently for a decade in, in the IPL, taking wickets, doing it, and he has been very reliable at, at the death. But I think, uh, you know, to, to all... You know, the listeners and viewers out there, you also need to appreciate that Eden Gardens is a very, very difficult ground to defend. Mm. You know, once a batter gets in on that mm-hmm. ground, mm-hmm. the ball disappears. Yeah, and yeah. it's, you know, the outfield is like an ice ring. Yeah, it travels so quickly. And once you get in, you can pop sixes because, you know, that is one venue. The other one is Bang- Bangaluru, yeah. where your sixes don't just go two rows back, mm-hmm. they go 20 rows back. So it's a very hard ground for bowlers to bowl. Mm. One caddy's another one. Mm. Yeah, one caddy's the same. Um, look, uh, what I saw, for, I just want to say, Natarajan's last over as well, those Yorkers that he hit, not one other bowler throughout the whole night was able to mm. hit their Yorkers. And you've got to remember when you are watching games at Kolkata that it does get dewy, the ball does get wet. Yep. And 
even though you do have a rag, it's quite significant in how much that can affect your execution of the Yorkers. So uh, I think big ups to him and how he finished that innings off. Mm. Tanush Bharat and Megastar Rocky with a similar, uh, with a different take though, on why can't SRH just use another Indian seamer like Umran Malik or Akash Singh and bring in Travis Head for Marco Janssen. Not the, the point of the panel was very different. They were very uh, praiseworthy well, if, of the selection balance. I think, I think that balance was the right balance. I think if you were ever looking at making a change to that balance of that side, you, you would probably look at, at bringing in Faisal Faruqi. Mm. Uh, he is a, a very effective bowler at the top and, and can bowl death, swings the ball both ways. He's in very good form for Afghanistan and coming out of the ILT20. But you've got to give Marco Youngson an opportunity. Phil Salt played out of his skin tonight. He put him under pressure at the top. And, and, and Marco Janssen was a, a good matchup for this side with his extra bounce and yeah. the ability to swing the ball back. Mm. Yeah. The, the, other, the other thing is that I, I don't think he's here yet, but you know, I, I think Hasaranga mm. in that side will make a massive difference. Mm. Um, you know, it's, that, that's going to be the dilemma for Sunrise, particularly if they lose the first couple of games. You know, are we going to see the musical chairs uh, around the overseas players and the domestic mm. players, and then it's going to be back to where they all started? Yeah. Well, Dan Vittori actually mentioned Hasaranga not being there, but they were looking forward to him joining the side. So, which leans towards the fact that they didn't play head because they don't want to change the makeup of the side. Hasaranga would just come in for Marco Janssen, and the, the balance still remains mm. the same. Yeah, he's of course dutifully serving out his. Uh too much ban in test cricket, so <laughs> we'll give him some time to just recover from that uh, that incident. Uh, but let's uh, also appreciate how good this game was. In fact, we don't feel like being overly critical of either side. They've put up a serious show of entertainment. It's almost got the IPL up and running. Yes, we've had a couple more games, but this was really the contest and the sixth fest that ends up making a lot of IPL memories in years to come. So let's try and revisit it. Uh, in the in the pace that it happened, our rapid fire review is ready. You know the drill. Uh, a couple of questions either your way, and you mastered in that first game. So I have high expectation now <laughs> from all of you uh, to give me an answer within 20 seconds. Uh, let's start uh, with you, Wasib Jaffer, Russell or Klassen, the more sensational knock, and why? I think both of them. Uh, it's hard to pick, uh, but just because. Uh, when Klassen played, I thought the game was over. It looked like KKR was running away with the game, so he brought SRH into the game. Uh, I would give it to Russell just a bit because if he had got out, it would have you know, been very difficult. Plus, he picked up two wickets as well. Mm. Okay, fair enough. Um, Mitchell McClanagan, what does Harshit Rana's display mean for Kolkata going forward? Well, it gives them a bit of surety around their Indian pacer. gives them some confidence that he can perform under pressure and and I thought he was aggressive at the top as well. And that's what you need with the new ball, particularly at a, a ground that's uh, really advantageous to, to batters at the top. Mm. All right. Uh, Tom Moody, will this outing rattle Stark and Kolkata I mean, for Stark's performance today? Not at all. Mm. Um, you know, if, if Stark had one uh, indifferent over, but, uh, you know, he's been around the block a few times and, He's had good days and bad days. He's had more good than bad. And, you know, he is a genuine specialist and, and gun in this format of the game. So, you know, I'm sure that, uh, you know, he'll, uh, he'll bounce back and be relieved his team has won. Ultimately, regardless of what you get paid, it's, it's, it's the outcome you're looking for from a team perspective. Okay, I can tell you I was calculating that mentally and he is within his 20 seconds. So I'm going to just pull out that clock or just rewind it and it's all set to go again. <laughs> And just to, be, to show its efficiency, I want to go back to you, uh, Tom Moody, uh, as we go back to how crucial was Ramandeep's innings and also why did he go in ahead of Rinku and Russell? Yeah, well, obviously, they, 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 uh, I've identified Rinku and Russell as, as genuine finishers. So there's a certain phase of the game they want them to go in. Uh, and Ramandeep played a critical innings because he, he just changed the momentum. The, the, the innings was sort of slowly ticking over, but not at the pace it needed to go. Mm, very good. Just gone to I knew you went to stop. <laughs> uh, and uh, Mitch McClanagan, should Pat Cummins have held himself back for Andre Russell in the first innings? You're 20 seconds now. Yeah, really good question. I think he got the first couple of balls to Russell, which is a really good opportunity to get him out. 
I think if anything, he could have backed in Marco Janssen a little bit more. Even though he's expensive at the start, he was still a really nice matchup to Andre Russell. And finally, Wasim, uh, why did Hyderabad not pick Travis Head and is that the right call going forward? 20 seconds start now. I think that those top three Indian batters are, are pretty good. Uh, and like we've said, if Hasaranga comes back, probably he'll come in in place of Marco Janssen. So that makes it easier for them to select the team without changing it too much. And those three batters have done well uh, for SRH uh, in, in the previous years. Okay, fair enough. Uh, good job from our panel. I am going to continue taking thoughts that are pouring in uh, from our viewers. VVS sends this to us. I think he's up and watching <laughs> VVS. Uh, I think it's a different VVS, but it's a good one, he says. Do you think if Tripathi was given out LBW when no one appealed, that SRH might have won this game? Oh, it's a bit harsh. I know what he's trying to say. Bado struggling in the middle. Uh, loses his wicket a bit earlier, and mm. then that happens. I mean, fans tend to think this way. Oh, look, you know, possibly, but <laughs> we haven't got a crystal ball. But, he, you know, he could have also, uh, after you know, having that sort of half-life gone out and hit the next 20 balls and got another 50 runs, you know. So, look, he, he didn't quite have his rhythm tonight, but he was not on his own when it come, mm. to, come to that. Not everyone, you know, had their uh, rhythm out there, and that's quite evident in, in early parts of IPL yeah. as well. Yeah. And both of those partnerships that he was a part of were net positive towards them getting the, chasing down the it's run rate and video. putting them into a good position. Uh, Rocky wants a rating for Pat Cummins' captaincy tonight. How would you rate his captaincy? Though? Did he get most things right? Good scope for improvement? Was the it? only thing I, I think uh, you know he faltered was when Russell came in, he, he, he bowled that over and obviously hit him in, mm. in top, top of his handle and then the next over was given to Markande, even yeah. though Markande has got him out a few times, but I thought he's given him the start, you know, those three sixes in that over, and that got uh, mm -hmm. Andrew Russell going. So that's the only thing. Probably the fast bowlers could have bowled one or maybe two overs there would have mm -hmm. been a good decision. Mm -hmm. I'd, I'd say a seven. I thought mm -hmm. in terms of his changes, you, from the outside, of, and you'll probably attest to this, is as long as you know why your captain's making decisions, um, that's ideally what, what you want from a skipper. He looked like the way he was interacting with his players, he had good chemistry with the team as well, and, and that's one of the other things you want to see in the first game. Mm. Uh, Bikki Sarkar just asking whether the over eight rule was followed. They were one over behind. Yes, I saw that actually uh, at the start of the 19th over when Mitchell Stark was bowling. But at the end of the 20th, I don't know if either of us got a clear picture from this, the TV pictures on whether uh, KKR were penalised for an extra... Fielder, anybody? Did anyone no, pick that I didn't up? See that. Yeah, not quite sure, but yeah, that the umpire seemed to be on top of this, so we can only assume that it was played out exactly as it should have been. Uh, other than that, uh, there's an observation from uh, Ayushri Sureka saying, "I remember Klassen bursting onto the scene in 2018, and he used to struggle against spin. Now he has one of the highest strike rates in the world against it. Uh, did he make any changes that the panel uh, can point out now?" Is that true, though, when he just came in? Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure about him str str struggling. Um, but what I do know is, having had him last year in the 100, um, the team I coached in England, uh, he was one of my overseas players. I talked to him about how he plays spin, and one of the big adjustments he's made over the last two to three years, he's just simplified his whole game. And his focus is more about his head position and keeping that as absolutely still as possible. You know, all his practice drills are, are very, very much um, designed for that. You know, so he's very specific the way he trains. He's not erratic like he used to be, just try to do a bit of everything. It's very specific the way he goes about it. Mm -hmm. We're a wonderful player and we are only just getting started with the likes of Klassen and Russell. So let's hope that Starting the season like this gives us plenty more innings like that. Now, this game was packed with great innings, big moments, uh, dramatic moments. So, let's just get the panel to review standout moments from this game. I'm sure it's tough to finish one or the other, but I'm going to ask Mitch, Tom and Wasim to rank the three uh, moments in what they felt were more significant as far as uh, the result ended up. So, Russell uh, striking back and giving KKR that big finish at the end. Klassen and his innings, or uh, Harshit Rana's brilliant final over. If there's a moment outside of this that you'd like to bring in as more significant than this, you may. But if I have to go for a 1-2-3 ranking, Tom? I'm going to go one outside, 
uh, and the Rhines four overs for 19 runs in a game where over 400 runs were scored in 40 overs. Okay, that's a standout moment for you. Would you like to rate these then? Two, three, four? Uh, Russell. Okay, okay. Russell won. Russell won. Narayan in there? Uh, I'd go Russell, Klaassen, in the order it's in. One, All right. two, three. Fair enough. Mitch? I would go Russell, Rana, because both of those were match winning um, moments. This, and then Klaassen, number three. Okay. Awesome. Yeah, one Russell, Rana, and Klaassen. And I would probably pick Suyash's catch as well. Yep. Because that, that was also a defining moment, him, Klaassen getting out. Uh, and then obviously uh, Rana bowling that last ball. Yeah, we shouldn't we shouldn't forget good old Raman I mean, you know, he's been awesome. Oh. I want to give him oh. a little mention. And Phil Salt, so many contributions mm. today that was significant, almost forgotten. But it almost seems like if you had to I sometimes ask the question of whether the better team won over the course of forty overs, which is not perhaps always accurate or appropriate for T twenty cricket. Do you sense this was more a collective team effort from KKR than it was Sunrisers? I think it was very similar. Very I, I similar. think I think both teams made very similar errors. Um, yeah, the point that Mitch made about Natarajan's last over, we reflected the same as Rana's last over. Oh. Two very good finishes in quite a indifferent sort of you know innings as a whole. Um, both teams will 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 learn from today and improve on certain areas. Mm. All right. Uh, well, regardless, these gentlemen had to pick some players. And uh, we're going to get some points as a result of it. This is, of course, the impact zone that we will enter now. And Crickinfo's and Crickinfo's impact numbers with their smart stats, which is, we believe, a slightly more accurate way oh. of... Uh, <laughs> wow. I'll tell you what, this is one of the best ranking systems I've ever seen for cricket. <laughs> <laughs> Crickinfo smart stats. You know what, I don't system. need to say anymore. I've said it enough. Mitch, why don't you take us through this graphic in your own charming way? Well, Russell was absolutely brilliant. What a masterstroke. Got the first pick. Pissed, picked the best player. <laughs> uh, everyone had talked Phil Salt out of the game. And, well, you've just got to back the man in. So I went with him. And then start, well, disappointing start. Uh, it could have been an absolute blowout. It could have been with Stark uh, if he had have even taken a wicket. Phil Salt let me down as well with the catch. Uh, <laughs> but I'm glad. What's him, Jaffa? Like, you've got some points on the board for class. And then... Both of us have made some ground on Tom Moody. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm a little bit disappointed, but that's fine. It, it's, it's, it's a long season. Yeah, very long season. And, of course, Tom was top of the tree yesterday. Mm. Uh, Mitch is today. Uh, we also have the game earlier today. Would you like to see how that went down? Yeah, I'm a touch Delhi more Punjab. nervous about that one. Let's have a quick look and see how the ratings went down there. Now, Wasim Jabba, Big Marsh, Warner, Rabada, Stubbs, Dhawan and Kuldeep for McLennigan. And Tom Moody, you can take me through this graphic and what stands out for you. I, I didn't know there was minuses. This is crazy. You've had your turn, mate. <laughs> <laughs> You've had your turn. Just, just keep it down. You haven't even made 100 points here. Um, yeah, oh, look, what can I say? Uh, you know, I, I, I was fortunate, I suppose. Uh, but I, the two key people for me were AXA and Arshdeep. You know, they, they're going to be, you know, in the points. They're that type of, uh, those type of cricketers. I'd like to make a suggestion to the panel yes. moving forward. Go on, this is unannounced or, or talked about, but I think we should all be able to pick the same players if we think they are the right players because there are certain standouts like Russell today. You know, my friend here had the advantage of picking one of the most dynamic all-rounders the game's ever seen you know, we should all have the opportunity to pick that well, person. Well, do you know what's going to happen now? I'm not asking, I'm not well, asking you're you. You're going to be close to the bottom now. So you might get an opportunity, no. being the person who's last, to pick <laughs> Russell first when we play KKR's next game. We've got a mute here. <laughs> <laughs> just a thought. I thought you were proposing something to the panel and you no. just told your fellow panellists to shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Won't be, the, won't be the last time. I'm, I'm, call, I'm calling you the panel. <laughs> right. Uh, let me review this with the rest of the governing council. Uh, That'll be good. Time out. And I will get back to you shortly. Thank you. Yeah, I, let's first, first get the rest of the schedule out <laughs> <laughs> for the tournament. But yeah, thank you very much to Wasim Jaffer, Mitchell McClanagan, Tom Moody. Wonderful day of IPL cricket, especially with all the stories mm -hmm. that came to fruition. Rishabh Pant returning was nice to see. Punjab starting at a new home ground with a win. All goes well for them in KKR and SRH. They're going to be serious teams to watch out for no matter 
uh, who plays them and where they play with the kind of firepower they've shown in their opening game. We're, we're, barely, we're barely done with that at the halfway point. We still haven't seen the Mumbai Indians or the Titans, and that is the grandstand fixture of this weekend. That is tomorrow, so too is Rajasthan Royals against Lucknow Supergiants. So 3 o'clock is when uh, we will build up. If you're in our part of the world, on, e on Maruti Suzuki Arena presents ESPN Cricket for Timeout. Do download the mobile app. If you haven't already, you can have a look at uh, everything that's going around from the world of the IPL. And we are expecting at some point the rest of the schedule to be announced. Will that be covered like we always do? We will see you tomorrow afternoon. Bye-bye. Breath up the city bird as you wait.